Meet Zach Galligan. He's not only a very normal young man, but he's also involved in very extra normal events in the new motion picture from Warner Brothers called Gremlins. You've seen yourself on the small screen. Now you've seen yourself on the big screen. Mm. What's the difference in impact for you now as a viewer, not just as an actor? On the small screen, I would say I was glad that the first stuff I did was for television because in the beginning I had a tendency to do too much and I was kind of overacting in a way. I hadn't really learned the subtleties of um, the lens, what it's like to act, to try and get an intimacy between you and the lens. So I was glad that some of my miscues, some of my mistakes look a lot better on the small screen because it's not, it's not so huge. And now with Gremlins I'm kind of glad because I think I still have some work to do but I think I've made the adjustment to the larger screen more gracefully than I would have if I had gone in just right off the bat. And uh, you know, because the camera gets so close and you have to be so careful not to do too much. I mean, just even a little squint of the eyes, you know, can say so much Especially on a huge on screen. screen. Absolutely, 40 <laughs> feet high. Yeah. One blink can knock us all to the back, to the back wall of the theater. Exactly. Right? My next guest helped bring some honorary little critters called gremlins into this world. Yes. <laughs> Soon a new batch will arrive in Gremlins 2. To give us some ideas to just what to expect, please welcome Zach Gallagher. He and Gizmo are back. Here's Zach Gallagher. Since Gremlins won now, you have gotten your college degree. That's true, yes. History major. That's very, that's exactly right. Every lunchbox that you got in the 80s came with a thermos like this. I know because my mom went out and got one just, she would never use the lunchbox because she was a 40 year old woman, or mid 40 year old woman, but she's an avid coffee drinker and she would use the thermos everywhere. And people would say, why do you have the thermos of a 10 year old? And she would say, well, my son happens to be the star of the picture. Uh, that looks like Warlock 2 Armageddon. Yep, Warlock Armageddon. Uh, I don't remember, I don't even know if the character had a name. Who the hell are you? It's just It's a cameo, I don't know. What was his name, Simon or something like that? I have no idea. Well, after, you know, being a part of a horror film, does it change your mind? Like, when you see different horror films, are you like, oh, that's not real, or does it take the experience away? It's funny you should say that, because I'm, I'm very fond of saying that I haven't really seen a movie since 1981. That was when I did my, my first thing in front of a camera. Ever since then, I've seen a collection of shots edited together with beautiful music. So yeah, the illusion has been permanently spoiled for me, but even though I know how it's done, I still really enjoy seeing stuff that's beautifully executed. Can't remember my name, character's name, and then uh, it has to be, it can't be Peter. I have no idea. I've done 65 movies or something like that, TV. I don't know. But Patrick Costello, that's right, yeah, Mr. Costello is psychic. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I'm actually here because I'm introducing a, a movie that I did in 1982 that has sat on the shelf for 33 years and is getting its film festival debut uh, on Saturday night at the Chinese. So it's going to be wild to show a movie that people have heard about but never seen for a third of a century. Uh, that's Adam Beckett from Nothing Lasts Forever. Yeah, that was the first movie I ever did with Tom Schiller from Saturday Night Live, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd. That was just, I'm only 18 years old there. It's kind of, you know, kind of amazing that I even was it was in it. Tell me about your career post Grimm. Kind of fell off the radar a little bit. Well, that's not exactly by design. That's just one of those things where, you know, you try out and the chips fall where they may and you get some parts that are good and some parts that aren't and then you try out the things you get to like number two and it's down to you and one other person. And, so it's just kind of like you go through a phase where your luck isn't clicking for you as much as possible. I happened to get the Mountain Dew commercial and the Secrets of the Mogwai gig in the same week. So after 30 years of nothing, you have these two amazing gigs and, and just a new creative team and a new experience. And I can't really say too much about what I'm doing in the show, but it's fun, it's kind of unexpected, it's different, and I think people are really going to it.
I pray to God, the Buddha, James Joyce, Ramakrishna, and Jesus the Christ that I will become an artist, no matter what. Gremlins or Gremlins 2. to another spooky year. Night ain't over yet, though. <sighs> mm. Make sure you eat before midnight. Remember what happened last time. <laughs> okay, boomer. <laughs>
has it meant to you to be, you know, be a part of introducing the Gremlins verse to, to a whole new generation? Well, you know, anytime you're a part of a franchise like this, you want to broaden the audience base. And I think Secrets of the Mogwai is a really clever way of doing that. It, it's essentially taking the zero to 15 demographic and showing them uh, the mythology, the rules, everything. And so it's a beautiful way to introduce people to the franchise and to broaden the base. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things you always hear whispers about, will we ever see another live action Gremlins movie? What what, what is your opinion on this? Do you you think it'll ever happen? I do. I think, uh, I can't really figure out why Warner Brothers would do two seasons, not one, two seasons of the animated series, spend a lot of money on it, unless there was some kind of end game. And usually the end game for a huge studio like uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is a live action film. Yeah. Live action film is always where you're going to make the most money. You know, like, uh, well, Secret Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario Brothers, just kind of disproved that. But right. other, other than Except that, step into the role. Yeah, that's that, that's kind of like a one in a a, a very rare uh, thing to make 1.4 billion like Super Mario Brothers did worldwide. Yeah. But yeah, I think the end game probably. I'm hoping will be um, a third film. I don't think it'll be a reboot though, because I'm pretty sure Chris Columbus has nixed that idea and he owns part of the rights. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember you tell me you email a lot with Joe Dante. Yes. Um, do you know how he feels about it? Could you see him involved in it? Uh, really don't know. I know he was hard at work on season two of Secrets of the Manga, so I don't even know if that's crossed his desk. You'd have to ask him if he comes today. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, cool. Well, I appreciate your time as always. Thanks a lot.